The book Postcolonial Studies and Beyond demonstrates a balanced and thoughtful approach to its subject matter. The editors aim to highlight the expanded realms influenced by postcolonial studies and reintroduce a sense of historical urgency that might have waned during its theoretical development and institutional establishment. The collection of 19 essays, categorized under themes like globalization and the post-colonial eclipse, neoliberalism and the post-colonial world, beyond the nation-state, and back again, and post-colonial studies and the disciplines in transformation, comprises contributions from various academic fields such as anthropology, English, history, political science, cultural studies, and Talmudic studies. The essays exhibit a resonance among them, not in terms of uniformity or forced agreement, but rather in recognizing the necessity for re-evaluation of the complex and dynamic term postcolonialism and its associated adverb. These essays originated from papers presented at a 2002 conference, conceived before the events of September 11, 2001, and the subsequent Iraq War. Despite this, the essays remain pertinent due to their focus on underlying cultural, economic, and political forces and their shared emphasis on historical contextualization and specificity. The book's title serves as a driving force for the essays, many of which acknowledge the historical evolution of postcolonial studies, alongside postmodernism and poststructuralism since the 1970s in American and British universities. The essays highlight the potential danger as articulated by David Scott, of postcolonial studies, losing its critical edge, as it becomes more established and canonized. The beyond in the title refers, in part, to the need to reconfigure postcolonial studies from its existing foundations, rather than completely reinventing it. For instance, Rob Nixon's essay Environmentalism and Postcolonialism, outlines how certain core aspects of postcolonialism, such as hybridity and cross-cultural exchange, can be integrated into environmental debates, challenging the conventional notions of pristine wilderness and preservation. Another interpretation of the beyond in the title pertains to the discourse surrounding historical events since the 1970s, and the development of the challenging concept of globalization. Ali Bedid, in his essay on globalization, again, argues that postcolonial discourse is well equipped to analyze the colonial underpinnings of global flows and to expose the unequal geography of globalization. He suggests that postcolonial historiography can provide insights into the shift from European colonialism to U.S. imperialism. 77. James Ferguson's densely argued essay, Decompassing Modernity, delves into the notions of globalization and modernity. He challenges traditional views that position Africa as both spatially and temporally behind, proposing a re-examination of Africa's political-economic crisis within the context of modernity. Ferguson contends that this approach could disrupt enduring hierarchies and exclusions. 180. Ferguson also implies that intellectual work conducted under the umbrella of postcolonial studies inherently involves engagement and activism. Otherwise, it becomes a mere record of catastrophes. Throughout most of the essays, a common demand emerges for historical contextualization and specific examination. This insistence on historicization and particularization represents a dimension of beyond that transcends the risk of becoming inwardly focused and isolated. Despite the sprawling nature of the term postcolonial studies, what remains crucial and compelling, especially in the present moment, is the tangible reality of the subject matter. This is exemplified in Ferguson's portrayal of a child soldier in Chad, wielding an AK-47, 
wearing a t-shirt that reads patience my ass three essays at the beginning and end of the collection encapsulate the nuanced interpretations of beyond peter holmes opening essay beyond the straits postcolonial allegories of the globe exemplifies his characteristic tide and elegant argumentation the notion of straits in his title encompasses the metaphorical challenge of moving beyond eurocentric thinking as well as historical and geographical references, including the current migration challenges between North Africa and Southern Europe. The concluding essays by Frederick Cooper and Neil Lazarus, The Study of History and the Politics of Postcolonial Modernism, respectively, serve as summative pieces. Cooper advocates for a more rigorous historical approach, asserting that an ahistorical stance promotes apolitical thinking. Lazarus, focusing on literature, criticizes the limited scope of the literary works considered in the field, emphasizing the importance of maintaining literature's place within postcolonial studies. This ultimate interpretation of beyond doesn't veer into unfamiliar territory, instead, it re-emphasizes the empirical aspects grounding theoretical exploration in the dynamic reality of everyday life. Postcolonial studies and beyond resonates with the spirit of other significant works from 2005, such as Maya Jasonoff's Edge of Empire and Inga Clendenin's Dancing with Strangers. The question arises, could there be a fresh intellectual direction emerging within academia?